Cedar Point is arguably the world's roller coaster capital. While they no longer have the record for the most roller coasters, they currently have 16 different roller coasters, many of which are award winning or record breaking for their respective genre. But Cedar Point also has some notable non coasters that are not to be missed. So in this video, I will rank the top 25 best rides and attractions at Cedar Fair's flagship park. Before starting the countdown, I want to note that this list will include a few defunct rides I experienced over the years, and I will also be including a few water slides from both Cedar Point Shores and Castaway Bay. Starting off this list at number 25 is the Cedar Point and Lake Erie Railroad. This train ride gives a full tour of the back half of Cedar Point. This attraction is often faster than walking and offers some unique views of both Millennium Force and Maverick and there's some light theming along the course as well. Number 24, Cedar Creek Mine Ride. This classic aero mine train is sorta of jerky and it does a lot of meandering, but it offers a decently long and unpredictable layout. There is one surprise pop of airtime and a few scenic turns that run alongside the water. Number 23, Iron Dragon. This aero suspended coaster is much tamer than the others I've ridden. This one just doesn't build up much speed in either half, which results in mild swinging at best. I do like the picturesque finale over the misty pond though, even if it is rather slow, and the swinging cars are still a fairly rare feature nowadays. Number 22, Corkscrew. This classic aero looping coaster is another jerky one. The valleys have rough landings, the turns are shaky, and the transition of the corkscrew will bang your head but this coaster does have an exciting start. The first drop gives a good pop of airtime in the back car, then you navigate this weird speed hill with some great sustained floater airtime, and then the vertical loop delivers good positive Gs. Number 21, Cedar Downs Racing Derby. This classic Prior and Church attraction is one of two remaining in the United States. It's basically a high speed carousel. The sustained laterals and lack of a restraint make this attraction a rare and fun treat nowadays. Number 20, Thunder Canyon. This Intamin River Rapids ride is a scenic adventure. The layout is almost entirely hidden amongst the trees and there's a nice mix of soaking rapids and massive waterfalls. Up next would have been Mean Streak. This massive din wood coaster was violently rough in the back car or on a wheel seat, but my front row rides were decently enjoyable. That seat was fairly smooth, probably helped by the trims, and the visual of flying through a wooden structure this large and dense was cool, even if it didn't have much airtime or laterals. Number 19, Skyhawk. This supersized SNS Scream and Swing has the usual short cycle plaguing this ride model, but the four or so max swings offer some nice floater airtime, paired with cool visuals either looking up at the sky or down on the midway. Number 18, Power Tower. This massive SNS drop tower may not have much power, but the visuals atop the tower are breathtaking. No matter which side you sit on, you're guaranteed to get a stunning view of both the peninsula and Cedar Point. The launch side offers some weak floater airtime at the top, while the drop side offers a suspenseful drop with a tiny pop of airtime at the start of the descent. Number 17, Snake River Expedition. This is a unique boat ride that's a relaxing contrast to the park's massive roller coasters. This attraction has a similar feel to Disney's Jungle Cruise with the wisecracking guide and dry sense of humor. The journey has a fun hold up scene and a few interesting sets to complement those jokes. Number 16, Rendezvous Run. This indoor water coaster is the signature attraction at Cedar Point's Castaway Bay Hotel. This is among the shortest water coasters out there, but there are two drops at Pack-a-Punch and offer solid pops of airtime. Up next would have been Wicked Twister. Just removed after the 2021 season, this Intamin Impulse coaster was the first of the bunch to have two twisted spikes. The launches had decent power and the spikes offered a combination of light laterals and mild weightlessness and the visual of careening off the edge always had me clenching onto the restraint for dear life. Number 15, Rougarou. Originally opening as Mantis, a stand-up coaster, 
Rougarou has a unique layout for a floorless coaster. The straight first drop offers a little floater airtime, the vertical loop offers decent positive G's, the dive loop is fluid, and the inclined loop is super forceful and intense. The second half is a weird twister section, and you do need to watch out for headbanging here on the abrupt transitions. Number 14, Point Plummet. The best attraction at Cedar Point Shores is easily this quartet of drop pod slides. It's always a rush when the trap door opens and you fall out, and the initial plunge, while short, is steep and fast. Then you have a series of tight and forceful turns on the way down that are taken at a blistering pace. Up next would have been Shoot the Rapids. This Intamin water ride was plagued with downtime and a short stint at Cedar Point. But I did enjoy this attraction the lone time I rode it. The two drops were quite tall for a water ride, and I remember them delivering itty bitty pops of airtime. Then the splashdowns were absolutely soaking, and just what the doctor ordered on a hot day. The layout also had some rock work to give it the feel of a classic log flume, despite being a newer attraction. Number 13, Professor Delbert's Frontier Fling. Now I know this is an upcharge, but this 153 foot or 47 meter tall sky coaster is an absolute adrenaline rush. The free fall in such an exposed riding position is exhilarating and never gets old. Number 12, Max Air. This Hoos Giant Frisbee is often closed for me, but when it's open, it's one of the park's best flat rides. While the harnesses are a bit bulky, this one has a long cycle with seven or eight max swings, each of which delivers good floater airtime. And the down swings offer good positive Gs as well, thanks to the ride's immense speed. Number 11, Wind Seeker. My favorite flat ride at the park is another one that's prone to downtime, but this ride offers the best view of any attraction at Cedar Point. You really feel like you're swinging out over Lake Erie, and you reach heights of 301 feet or 92 meters so it's quite intimidating rotating above so many of Cedar Point's massive coasters. Number 10, Blue Streak. This classic John Allen wood coaster has a basic out and back layout. The airtime wasn't as strong as past visits in 2021, but the first two bunny hills still delivered good pops of airtime. The front had weaker floater airtime on most of the remaining hills, while the back not only had less airtime, but it was also shakier in the valleys. Number 9, Gemini. This racing hybrid coaster has some underrated airtime. If you're in the back, that first half has some strong pops of airtime, while the front car is weaker floater airtime on the ascents. The ride also mixes in some positive Gs, but that final helix is janky, and there are some bumps on a few of the valleys. Number 8, Valraven. The much maligned B&M dive machine does not deserve as much hate as it gets. This coaster offers breathtaking views, two vertical plunges filled with floater airtime, decent G's in the pullouts, and a hang time filled zero G roll. While I prefer the rigid over the shoulder restraints, the vests aren't a deal breaker for me, and I can still appreciate Val Raven's graceful and floaty ride experience. Number seven, Raptor. This B&M invert has an absolute presence on the midway, and it's a good coaster too. The six inversions are very snappy, with the highlights being the dizzying zero-g roll and the super abrupt cobra roll. These inversions did have some light head banging though, and you always need to watch out for that violent snap into the brake run. Number six, Gatekeeper. This B&M wing coaster is a lot of fun. That wing over drop starts with great hang time before delivering crushing positive Gs in the pullout. The rest of the first half has some wonderfully floaty elements, including the two inversions over the main entrance that are paired with some of the best near misses of any attraction. Gatekeeper does fade towards the end, but the first three quarters make it one of my favorite wing coasters. Number five, Top Thrill Dragster. This intimate accelerator coaster opened as the world's tallest and fastest coaster, and it is still a rush to this day. The hydraulic launch has some serious power, it violently yanks you down the track, and it's extra special in the front row as you're blasted in the face by wind. Then the top hat offers a breathtaking view, some floater airtime over the top, and strong laterals on the twisting descent. Top Thrill Dragster may be short, 
but it is a pure and super fun thrill. Number 4. Magnum XL200 This Aero Hypercoaster was a trailblazer. It cycled in the airtime focused mega coasters we love today, and Magnum still holds up. The first half offers beautiful views of Lake Erie, paired with floater airtime, while the return run has some of the most violent and powerful ejector airtime hills in the entire world. The triangular shaped hills try to launch riders into orbit. Now some may find these hills too uncomfortable, but I love their sheer power and aggression. Number 3. Maverick This Intamin creation is a jack of all trades. It starts with an intense, ejector airtime filled drop before flinging riders through some aggressive S-bends. Between the laterals, speed, and positive G's, these maneuvers are some of the most intense of any coaster. That leads into a powerful airtime hill and two decent inversions. Then the second half ups the ante. You have a solid launch below the station, followed by two extremely snappy stangle dives and a few more airtime hills. Maverick has incredible pacing and its diversity makes it a special ride. Number 2. Millennium Force The original Intamin Giga Coaster is quite simply pure fun. The first drop offers some incredible floater airtime and the following overbank is one of the most intense elements on any coaster. I routinely gray out from the base of the first drop through the first tunnel. It always leaves me dizzy. The rest of the coaster has some decent floater airtime and blistering speed as you fly around Millennium Island. Just make sure to ride this coaster up front so you can appreciate all that speed and how it's sustained start to finish. And coming in at number one is Steel Vengeance. This Rocky Mountain Coaster's creation is considered by many to be the world's best roller coaster, and it's one of my favorites too. This ride has the intense ejector airtime and majestic hang time we've come to expect from RMC, but this one just goes on forever. The first half has the larger, more sustained elements, with the top hat and outer bank in particular standing out for the sustained ejector airtime. Then the second half has the smaller, more compact elements that will aggressively pop you out of your seat. Look no further than the final series of bunny hills that have riders bouncing like a rag doll. Each half of Steel Vengeance is a borderline top 10 steel coaster, so it's no surprise the full package is so elite. So that is how I rank the top 25 rides and attractions at the Cedar Point Resort. What are your favorite rides at Cedar Point, or thoughts on any of the attractions on this list? I would love to hear your thoughts about them down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.